My name is Raymond Gray, I'm the chairman of Congo State Development. I'm a son of the soil. The other day I, I, I walked into a coffee shop and someone said, I saw you on TV, but, but, but where are you from? Your name is so rara, Raymond Gray. <laughs> and I, I, I said, I, 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 my father was born in Uterus, I grew up in Bantani. Um, you know, I, I, I know, I, 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 yes, even though I've worked and got my experience over the last 20 something years in the investment markets outside of Namibia, um, I am Namibian. So, so let me just have an introduction as well. All protocols observed, uh, but uh, Honorable Erasmus Sotoli, Honorable Maureen Mwende, last time I chatted to you with uh, Nicholas Sotinda. So, um, all protocols observed. Um, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to ask that you please just bear with me. So let me give you my message. So that I know you've got my message. And then we'll go through the presentation. So I think the, the simple message, almost, means new hope. Right? I, I, I want you all to remember that. You'll see this brand. If you haven't seen this brand before, I also invite you to go and see what we've done. This was an eight year journey. But the new hope, in terms of all the other speakers that we have today, they showed you the market. They mentioned to you a number of other aspects that I really agree with, but I'm not going to delve into those. Um, to have a safe place to call home is a basic human right. And when that right is afforded to you, you can be a productive part of our society. You can be a productive citizen. So as a core basis of what we are trying to do, we, through providing these 38,000 houses, houses, I'm showing you all the challenges and the learnings that we have, ultimately, we will end up, if we succeed, really to have a, a more productive society. And since this is the Economic Association of Namibia presentation, I feel that I just have to include right up front, also just a little bit about, uh, 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 from an economic perspective, do you realize that the construction of homes, the maintenance of homes, and the transaction, the transactions around sales, etc., etc., for homes contributes to 14%, up to 14% of our gross domestic product. That's a large part. At the moment, it does not contribute that much in our, in, in our country. But not only does that contribute to 14% of our GDP, it is a contribution via inclusive growth. Right? So, so it's not a growth that it, it, it basically means that it looks at the broad base of everyone and it takes us all along in the wealth creation process. Um, I'm going to be giving you a message around, uh, maybe you can move on to the next uh, uh, slide, just what I'll talk about. Uh, I'll give you a quick insight of almost for those who don't know much about it. Um, we, we build neighborhoods, then I'll talk you through nine lessons that we've learned over the last eight years since we've started this process. Maybe you would have only seen some of what we're doing recently, but this is nearly on a decade of where we've really dedicated to try and solve this, 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 this issue. And then I'm going to close off um, by asking you to be my ambassador, to be our ambassadors, to be our partners, to collaborate. Often what I've found in all of the lessons that negativity Disbelief, lack of actually doing the research and understanding whether we can do this, contributes so much to obstacles that it takes our eye off the ball of what I think all of us are trying to do. So, I mean, I look at the audience today, I'm happy to see that at the end of the day, we still have such a big audience. It just means that we all really are passionate and we really want to solve this. This is one of the biggest audiences I've spoken to around almost, I mean, what? Well, We've got a lot of our sales presentations and likes, but I mean just a general audience to show your passion around housing. So if we can just move on, oh, I've actually got the... So a quick background, who is almost? We are a multidisciplinary infrastructure development company. Um, we deal with infrastructure development, uh, construction finance, uh, capital raising, and alternative end user finance. And the, 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 the issue that's at hand is twofold, and, and our company being multidisciplinary, 
make ensures that we do supply of bonds, and we also answer the question about the end user finance. That's the leadership of Bongos. Um, I'm quite proud of a really diverse board. Um, those are the individuals that ensure that there's proper governance structures. Uh, you must realize, and I'll talk a little bit later about our various stakeholders. There's more than a billion and million dollars directly invested in us. And it's extremely important, as we spoke earlier around governance, we're proud that we've got a real diverse uh, uh, board with many disciplines, so we believe that from a leadership perspective, the investment is in good hands. And now I'm going to wake everyone up a little bit. Uh, if you may, please, make it louder. Mm -hmm. Namibia is full of hard work. It, it is so important that when you are doing a pioneering project, that people have an address to you. They know who you are, what you stand for. It represents your vision. It makes sure that your reputation is linked to that brand. And so we felt it extremely important that we invest in our brand and making sure everybody knows what we stand for. I'll come back to that, but I thought I'll just put that into you. You may be a little bit more awake now. So now about Congress Valley Development, we are Namibia's largest single residential uh, uh, development. The land size is 1,750 hectares. Ultimately, we're going to do 28,000 homes at the end. Phase one is only 4,500 homes, I said only. But in, the, in, the, in a lot of the discussion that you look at the market in the backlog, it is a drop in ocean. Now, I always like to talk about the market of that we've got students qualifying that NASFAS uh, uh, sponsors every year. NASFAS is a 34,000 bursary for some. You get about two or 3,000 just from those people coming into the system. People that says, we are trying to do too much or it's too big. You missed the point. We're going to wait that 100 years that was talked about, and, and I don't think we as a society at that time. Um, it's very important we create 14,000 job opportunities just through the construction process. Currently, there's close to 2,000 people on site working uh, at, on the project. Then there's 4.3 billion, a low estimate that we're pumping into the economy, and that is invested in the Libyan SMEs. Now, we are proudly in the Libyan, and that's why I also started my talk of around that. All of that money goes back into the system. So we raise money for, from the Libyans, we collect foreign direct, uh, direct investment, but we are making sure that that money goes to the Libyan SMEs that we mentor. Because ultimately, yes, we want to invest in our SMEs, but we also want quality housing for those people that move in, and we'd like to consider that whole ecosystem and value chain which I'll talk to. So, so where is Ongos? Um, it's only 14 kilometers away from the CBD. A part of my work history was in, in, in Johannesburg, where you know you travel far distances to go to 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 to, to work. Um, it's not far, especially we are busy, and a lot of some of the, the people in this room know that we are busy looking at a dual carriage road, the whole Monte Cristo, which means that access there is only uh, uh, um, five, uh, but seven minutes, you know, which is 14 kilometers. And plus that, it's a multi, a multi, uh, a mixed use development, which means that we've got businesses there. You may not have to travel that much, especially with it being a smart city, you've got connectivity, so you can actually even work from home. But it's not far from Bintu, it's, it's only 14, it's in the northwest of Cargo. The other important point that I want to make here that I usually speak about is if you look at Bintu being a crater, to the south of Bintu, we've got our water plateau. If you do huge developments on that side, we're going to contaminate our water, and we know how precious water is, is for our country or for our city in our country. If you look to the east, it's extremely mountainous. There's micro hard rock. You cannot develop at the scale there in an affordable way. If you look to the west, we've got uh, a National Heritage Site and in, 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 in the Alpine, uh, Game Reserve. So the natural expansion and the vision from the founders of Hong was to say, okay, let us invest in a piece of land. It was barren land, just farmland, to the northwestern corridor, as it is. The city of Bintu, and I don't know if you know, it slants slightly to the south, to the north western uh, uh, corridor, which means that bulk service provision becomes a lot cheaper over the long term. It's also something I only just learned because I'm more in a financial area, but I think that's an important point as well. 
Who are we doing this for? We're doing it for men and women in uniform, um, civil servants, NDF, uh, NAMPOR members, young professionals. Those are typically the people that we are building the houses, which is ranging from about 300,000 Bolivia dollar to 900,000 Bolivia dollar. We move on a bit quicker. So. In order to build a city, 28,000 units, which is effectively a third of the size of Bantam, we need to provide bulk services. This is maybe one of the areas that I do want to mention around how we would like collaboration with the city and uh, uh, other uh, uh, stakeholders. But we have to build that is a wastewater treatment plant, the first since about 1970, 56%. This is water up to over 90%. We've got our water reservoir. What makes me so proud about this, and I saw this come up from the ground, it's the first water reservoir built by a black construction company in Namibia. <laughs> and it's not this big lens, it's Georgia and there. And you know, they told me the stories about never getting opportunity to do this. If it was not for our belief in our people that we can actually do this and holding their hands, there the structure stands. You know, I, that, that whatever happens even from almost this time forward, there is so much value that we've already created in belief through our spending into our own community. It's real. I want you to drive there, go and see what's happening. This even is an outdated uh, 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 picture. But we've got, we're launching close to 400 homes uh, within the next few months. So water is flowing, electricity, uh, I must just, I think it's in this week, they were testing it in. So the homes are happening, they're standing. Often what we've also experienced, people didn't believe. They say, but really, why can you do it? The problem is not why can you do it, it has to be done. And some of the have got to take the lead and actually collaborate and partner with the rest of us in order to deliver this. The next few slides are just a few pictures just to show you the reality. That's what the street stage look like. Uh, you can just, uh, just leave them each for one or two seconds and move on. Does this work? Oh. <laughs> oh, hold on. I, I haven't seen some of the, the houses. Let him do it. Okay, just, 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 I just want you to pause on one of the other slides just to see the quality of what we're building. Um, you know, in our vision that I'll talk to just now, we talk about dignified existence. Um, it doesn't help that we build a home that a person won't have uh, a dignified, a come out of a dignified house. So, so these pictures, the finishings inside, uh, just move on, move on, you can move on. And move on, that's just a street set. That's the inside of the homes. If you go there now, we've actually got a few homes where we furnish. And uh, we've had an open day on Saturday, which was extremely successful. Many people went to look what it looks like. And they're starting to feel the reality of the first unit. You know, if we build about, if, if we launch about 400 units, that means that each unit has got about, let's call it four people per unit. That's 1,600 people that are going to be there. Imagine if you've got cars that go into their, their squandered cars, so there will be a suburb. Mont uh, Rocky Crest has got about 480 units. So we're building something on the first phase, on the first launch, bigger than Rocky Crest. A lot of people talk about the access. Now, there we've taken upon ourselves to deliver the road infrastructure. Um, that's also pretty close if you go look at our development. And I think that's the last slide that just tells you almost is real. Right? Now I'm going to go and I'm going to give you a little bit of perspective of the, the nature of the project and then the line, nine lessons that we've learned from that for other developers that may want to follow in the same process. Because the housing problem is so big, it is not almost the only problem. It's not Raven, it's not Refer uh, Jacob, it's all of us. As if we can get more decent homes to our communities. That is ultimately what we need to do. And I'm the first to, you know, to say I would love to collaborate with any, anybody else.
that share that same dream. Because the ultimate solution is to our community. We can move it forward. So, what's the nature of this development, and that's how, what's the learnings that we got from that? Firstly, oh well, you can move to the next slide. It's, it's large, right? 28,000 homes, uh, looking at just the first phase, 4.3 billion uh, uh, investment. Um, it affects large communities. Secondly, the term spans more than one generation. Um, you know, the founder needs to be resilient, impact on financial models, because we're not just looking at the three year, five year, ten year. The rest of my life, the next 30 years, I'll be building almost. You know, so I'm wishing that the 28,000 key, and remember, almost the, 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 the pilot project is in Britain. But we've got homes that we've delivered. Last year, late last year, I delivered 60,000 homes in Rutu. So we're not just looking at 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 at, at, at Rutu. But and then finally, we've got so many stakeholders and significant stakeholders. Everybody that wants to say, it. and I'll talk to that just now. Um, so what are the what are the nine lessons? Number one, you can move to the next slide. Number one, you must have a vision, and that vision must draw everyone together. It might, must make sure that you work in the same direction and everybody know what we're about so that we don't deviate because we don't have time for energy to be spent in, 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 in other directions. It must be done by locals. You can't have projects of this nature being done by somebody who has not grown up here or understand the dynamics of our society. Your reputation, my reputation, everybody that's involved in this project, our brand, and the, the, the people that work with us must have a reputation that stands the test of time and any question. It is too large, your heart must be right, your, 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 what you do in society must be significant, that's a very important lesson. Um, your vision must be linked to the national vision. It doesn't help that almost in as large as what it wants to do isn't linked to what our leadership is doing. Our leadership has put the environment for us in order to deliver this. So it must be linked to the national development goals. The one side is supply the homes. The other side is innovative financial solutions for the people that want to buy the homes. And I'll talk to that. We've got our rate to own program, we've got a rate to retirement program, where we make finance available to those who actually want to go stay in those homes. Stakeholders are key. We've got uh, eight stakeholders from the leadership to the municipality to the financiers and within the financiers you've got banks, you've got DFIs, you've got uh, asset managers, you've got the communities involved, you've got the suppliers. It is important that each of those stakeholders be paid due attention and thought because this is a huge project and they all going to have. In fact, it must be commercially viable. At the end of the day, we work on financial models and see some bankers in the room. They're not going to lend us money if, 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 if there's no commercial viability behind this. But commercial viability is one thing, but the type of investment that you do, it must be commercial viable and has some social impact. That is your dream investment that any capital, as Jacob has mentioned, 380 billion of capital can, can find its way into delivering in our society. Um, the founders need to be resilient. The sweat capital, the stubbornness, how often things have come to our table where we keep our vision clear and we are determined to achieve it, that you do need a stubborn founder. And then you need an integrated value chain. And I'll talk to that as well because it just helps you with the whole ecosystem to identify where there are potential areas that you need to give attention to. Um, Okay, now, now I'm going to, I'll, I'll go quick and I know my time is probably up. No, I've still got time. <laughs> so, so, within our vision, our vision has got five tenants. We can move to the next slide. Our, our, our vision is effectively, um, I've spoken about this, we can go to the next slide. Um, okay, so the thing, to be at the forefront of the African Renaissance by providing solutions that elevate human dignity through the power of ownership. Everyone in our company, we've got just over 100 direct employees, 
and a lot of stakeholders. They understand what our vision talks about. To be at the forefront, this has never been done before. So, you know, where else are you going to find an example? We are African and we are Namibian and we are proud of that. We provide solutions not just homes so that it delivers a dignified existence and ultimately, if you want to create a bigger middle class and more wealth, you need to find a way that ownership results in those people that you're building the homes for. Can move on. Local context. You know, this one, I think, and just sitting here, I don't need to, to, to tell you what I mean by local context. It's the SMEs, it's the builders, it's understanding the communities must be accepted. I, I, I usually give a longer talk on this, but for time's sake, I think this one really sits with you, and you can understand this. Brand strength. Um, and as hard as we work through the night to try and deliver this, ultimately people will look at you and say, who are you? Where do you come from? What is the nature of your company? Or what is the nature of your, your consultants? And Jacob, I know you're sure you, you would have faced some of that as well. So I think we're like brothers in this, you feel me? Um, <laughs> you can go on to the next one. I'm just going to talk a little bit through the different brands. So it's not just, it's not just a, a, a Reagan and America and the likes. There's a big team behind us. Yes, it's not just 100 employees that passionately come to work to deliver to this vision. We've really got a big professional team. And the next slide will also just talk to you. Okay. The next slide, okay. AIJ is very important. They are uh, project cost consultants. It's important that as a developer that they, uh, as a coordinator, that they're quite uh, solid. Next one. Okay. It must be linked to the national goals. And I'm, I'm extremely proud and happy and thankful to our leadership that they included uh, almost in a Harambe prosperity plan where they specifically talk about 20,000 housing units and, and the jobs we are creating. I think it's just move quicker because I'm, I'm running out of time. So in terms of financial solutions, I'm not going to bore you around all of this stuff. The way financiers look at this, right? If you look at the whole value chain of where money can be spent, they identify various risk buckets. Whether you are doing bulk, uh, okay, well, let me talk to this then. <laughs> I, 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 um, on this innovative financial solution for the end user, we've identified that there's 99,600 people in Vint, or about 450,000 inhabitants that rent. But these people have been paying rent for years, but they never had an opportunity to own their home. So, logically, how can we as a society sit down and say, we'll accept the status quo? This is going on. We must find a way to say, okay, what are the obstacles? Is it finance? So what we've done, we've launched a two billion Namibia dollar bond of Namibia stock exchange, and we've looked at this, uh, 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 a structure of how we can actually get these individuals into the financial market for financial inclusion. So over a five-year period, they they buy a house, effectively get a proper proper mortgage from the from the bank. But what we do throughout that process is we do financial literacy. It is forced on all this. It's a, it's a necessity that you do for uh, financial literacy so that the banks know that you are going to repay them every month. But we also changed that a little bit. We said a lot of our people are 50 years and older. When they walk into a bank, the bank says, I'm not interested in you. But these people have still got a long, you know, it's not uh, 1700s where we passed away in 60, 61, whatever the case may be. I was still got a long life. And in that context, we were ready to retire. And all that does is it says that a portion of your pension fund, a third of your pension fund that gets that you get to take in cash, that will settle the difference of your home loan. Let's move along to now. This one, the key success factors in terms of stakeholder collaboration and support, I've realized is is something that we didn't know in the beginning. We knew various parts of it, but it's extremely important that the communities, the audience that we spoke speak to become our ambassadors. Um, those are the stakeholders, and I ask you also today, please, when you walk out of here, don't look at almost, be our ambassador, buy a home there, uh, and let's create that community. Um, I was going to talk about smart city. Somebody earlier asked what's the definition of smart city. It's all around connectivity. So when you've got connectivity, you can have the internet of things on top of that, you can have a more efficient society. It's also a green city where we've got more sustainable use of our resources. Uh, move on, this is our community, it's one of our stakeholders. We made sure that we're really part of the community. 
move on. Commercial viability, it was a tough task where we saw more than 50 financial companies. Eventually, now everybody's, the, the reverse is happening now. The IFC has seen us two weeks ago, they want to take our program right across Africa. They've never seen it for a business which got supply and the financial solution as we have. We're quite proud about that. Founder resilience, I spoke about this integrated value chain. There are various opportunities that finance can happen from the land uh, delivery process, title, tenure, bulk services, construction, end user finance. So you need a whole vision that integrates everything. And my, my, my request is from you be deliberate in wanting to collaborate, partner, and be our ambassadors. Um, this is not our project, it is our project. 